the fuck? The launch of Series M4 was rough. From installing a play button instead of game itself, to baffling stuttering that completely ruined the flow of the game and the first impression. As a long time fan of the series, I was devastated. I had a new game from my favorite series and I couldn't play it. After some time and couple of patches, the shock disappointment and disbelief was toning down and I started playing even if on low settings with constant frame rate battle. Sam? Anyone? I'm here. What's happening? We got hit hard. The machine that rocked Doom 16 and Eternal and the Ancient Gods on high settings is suddenly scraping by for frames on low settings with butt ugly textures in a game that often looks worse than most of today's shooters. <laughs> The bugs, glitches and stiff animations didn't help either. There is no way around it. It was technical disaster. I... I don't even know what to say. It presented the rude awakening. The series we known for smooth performance, fluid gameplay, gorgeous vistas and balanced pacing has changed in this one. That's a big hole! I don't know where it gone wrong, but one is for sure. The game wasn't ready for launch. Like Ackerman! Because of that I decided to wait and delay my review till was able to play it somewhat normally and finish on serious difficulty. Now after hundreds of hours and couple of fixes, it's time to finish this. Recently, the game had a nice seasonal content edition for Halloween. The entire first level changed the setting and there are pumpkins, random scares and skeleton warriors in the rest of the game. Plus the popular Halloween blood option. Unfortunately, the wounds are still open. There are levels that are notorious for killing the frame rate and still are serious party breakers. But here's the catch. If you have GeForce 3080 or 1080, you won't have a problem. That's what makes me angry. The fact that the medium and low spec players are frankly thrown under the bus. In the series that was all about availability and simplicity. But hey, others are having fun. Well that's just great. Now that we kicked the elephant out of the room, let's get into it. The game starts expectedly but with a twist. Before the generic special forces action movie scenario, we're kicked with the minigun in the middle of the final battle with the legion system. That was nice and a great way to get you hooked, wanted to get back to it. Despite expectations, this game also starts during the war. Earth Defense Force is looking for options to turn the tide, which leads to search for the Holy Grail. Yes, here's your second encounter reference. Of course, things always get complicated, and so Sam and his team are sent to visit Italy, France and Russia. Just like in Series Sam 3, the game is more story driven than the originals. It's not a serious story, but it's here and is mostly hit or miss. The same goes for dialogues. There is a heavy emphasis on jokes and parody and Crow team went all in. Alright team, give me some options. Rome sealed tighter than a virgin's buttocks. Uh, sorry, Padre. Um, uh, wheels are out. There is no filter. It's literally throw everything and whatever sticks, it sticks. Found it! It is very well in the spirit of movie and series parodies like Hot Shots, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot and Allo Allo, which got tons of references throughout the game. So listen carefully, I shall say this only once. There are some genuinely funny lines. What the hell? What am I, a Japanese schoolgirl? When I was told I would fight part of something. I bet you're big in Japan. I'll have a Kravitzino to go, please. 
What a crab-tivating location for a big bat. I'm gonna run out of crab puns. Guess I'll have to widen my vocabulary. Stop being so shellfish and die already. Remember, Kenny, shoot him in the back. Yes, sir. Back shooting commencing. Sorry, I'm on duty. I can't get hammered. But then there are also many cringy ones put in just to fill up the space. A dramatic setting for the hero's final confrontation with reality. Is that what you call my fist meeting your face? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Today's my birthday. Damn, I didn't get you a present. Also, the dad jokes. This one is full of them. I got trapped under the statue of Uranus. That doesn't look like my... Let's not go there. You're right. I can do better. If you like them, you'll love this game. If you don't, you might get extremely bored. So, Kenny, you should have gone for an odd joke. Always good with Gnar. I see you! I bet you didn't see that coming. With Sam, it is always unclear how serious is he really. One is for sure, it's never that serious and bleak. From the very beginning, whenever you get the feeling of shit getting serious, Sam always pulls the rug right under your feet. In first encounter we got screaming headless kamikazes, Sam playfully evoking action movies in the middle of the danger and the pyramid of crates. In second we got flying big heads causing him to crash, in three we had trash talking into oblivion and into uh we had serious Sam too. How stereotypical. Hello! I am trapped in the tower! Naturally, Serious Sam 4 is also comical, colorful and bright, loud, clumsy and carefree. It's a parody and is completely self-aware. It takes all of the cliches and action tropes and has its way with it. That, my friends, is an ex-snake. Technically speaking, it's an ex-basilisk. Shut up, Rodriguez! It's throwing everything. If it sticks, great. If not, whatever. Pun after pun, dead joke after dead joke, obvious comments and some rare smarts that will make you giggle. It's up to every player. You either embrace it and enjoy, or you don't. I sense evil presence. Is your priest sense tingling? No, I just see pale corpses and floating objects. Sam has companions this time, and thankfully they do not get in the way. They're invulnerable, so you can blast everywhere all the way you want. Frankly, it was the only way. Sure, they are not as nearly refined, practical, capable, useful or pretty like Elizabeth from Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> Shut up, Hellfire! And that is not needed. Sam needs sidekicks that won't steal the show, won't stand in his way, but will help and finish an enemy here and there. And they fulfill that role perfectly. It's not easy to score that balance, but Crow Team nailed it. They will not turn tides by themselves, but are far from useless. However, they would not succeed without Sam, and that's how it should be. Sir, over here! To start, here is Lucky Psychic Kenny that presents an outsider's perspective in this crazy world of serious Sam. Haha, <laughs> benvenuto! There is Paolo, uh, never mind, he's dead. Then there is Jones's brother named Jones. Just, just throw with it. Intentional or not, I see obvious parallel to Carmen Brothers from Gears of War series. That makes it cool easter egg. Wow! Next to him there is Rodriguez. He yeah! ah! That's right, you sons of bitches! I fuck metal! I fuck your whole army! Come at me, you alien pendejo! You want Mexican? I got Mexican! You want American? I got American! Y'all wanna bite me? Come get your Chile con carne! Yeah, that's him. There is also returning. Who the hell are you?
There is everyone's crazy friend conspiracy theorist Carter. More like conspiracy terrorist. And your modern age badass Russian priest that completely accidentally looks like a game's music composer. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Sam? I thought you were dead. I got better. I... I don't even... <sighs> okay, okay, give me a sec. The one you'd forget but always has your back is Queen. Barbara Gordon to Sam's Batman. Her voice acting is exceptional in this one, which makes her seem a layered quality character. But wait, no parody can do without a crazy scientist. It is I, Professor Gottlieb Kiesel, your scientific advisor. Talk. And in that craziness, Dr. Kiesel matches Sam himself. What if your research is wrong? Then you will destroy Italy. Hmm, I really want a crystallized black hole. So do I. Ma'am, what are you doing here? This is a war zone. Introducing Nona, your typical crazy and brave grandma with a heart of gold. Ma'am, I'm a- Don't be afraid. Nona's right here. She help you fight the monsters. Only serious Sam can pull off something as silly as that. Yes, to alien fascisti! Don't shoot at my flowers! Come here! I will teach you matters! Ironically, one of the best characters in the game is not even a human. So, uh, awkward? What's your name? I am called Chagak Zalma Gakiak. Can I call you Charlie? Ah, uh, that is what my brood mother called me when I was but a hatchling. Cool! Cunning folks at Crow Team know who are one of the least favorite enemies in the series and manage to turn the tables in a single twist. It's quite brilliant, actually. By the end, the characters do leave a trail however small so they can't be dismissed completely. But it's all left in a light tone, like the story itself. I feel better already. Of course, the French convoy dudes are still dead. Great. Now I feel sad again. The alien overlords do not shy away from the madness either. Even more so, their posters hang right next to ours and their propaganda machine is hilarious. How many canoom does it take to screw in a light bulb? None! It's better to shoot them in the dark so you don't have to see their faces! What to clear say before dinner? Bon appetit! Oh yeah, I'm keeping those puns coming. Akraman fact of the day. Akraman was recently voted the second biggest jerk in the universe, right after his boss. Shoot this drone! Shoot it now! Seriously, shoot it! One of the main villains in this one is Akraman. His likeness similar to Hellpriest from Doom Eternal didn't do him any favors. Thankfully, he's more the character than all three of them combined. Not that he's a great villain, but he does impact the story, the characters, and contributes much to the lore. He's the master of the witch brides, he preaches about shadow plane philosophy, and is ever present. The last two villains I won't mention for spoiler purposes. It's a neat twist. The Mental Horde features probably the best lineup so far. Classic creatures like Rocketeers, Gnars, Clears, Werebulls, Biomax and Kamikazes are back, including popular additions from Series M3 like Scrapjack, Spiders, Helicopters, Witchbrides and Knooms. The new ones are pretty good additions and there is not a single one I would render useless. Whether it's on the ground, floating or in the air, everything's covered. New soldiers are much better, the processed are great quick cannon fodder, Mummies can be annoying like vampires, but that is their role anyway. It's fun when they burst into flames though. These I cannot pronounce, so I'll just call them toxic explosive piñatas. 
Zealots are great monotony breakers, pyros are agents of chaos and calypses are big flying fart machines. Drones are pesky but necessary fillers. The Sidewinders escaped from Ultron. Yep. And this is the greatest Half-Life easter egg I've ever seen. Oh yeah, time for a road trip. The game has mission tracker but it's more simple than it seems. The main missions are the story, what you're doing anyway. Side missions however are optional. Most of them you simply come across but some of them you need to discover. We should go this way. Guys? I told you, never trust the map. Guys, can you hear me? How about I just ask for directions? Guess not. Good thing, all of them are useful and very much worth it. Especially on higher difficulties. Already, we're forgetting what it's like to be human. What made life on Earth so great? I'll try to make that a daily thing from now on. I gotta say, we had the best food. Good Texan beef, hot Mexican spices. Ain't nothing like that to make you praise the Lord and cry for your mama when you're sitting on the porcelain throne. I'd go there with my buddies, have ten beers, five tostadas, and two lines of blow off a stripper's ass. Wake up in a ditch. Actually, uh, I don't miss that part. The stripper was nice, though. I named my machete after that girl. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I... <laughs> I sure do, Mr. Rodriguez. Here's to spicy food and spicier women. Audiologues are spread across the maps. They are well-voiced and are nice storytelling, too. But for some reason you can only listen them in a trixa. Why is that? I really don't know. Skill points are here, but if you ever thought Sam would have a real RPG system, <laughs> you're just silly. You inhaled it, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. Of course you did. It's basically divided in two trees, function and fun. The first one gives you more loot, better endurance and allows dual wielding. From small weapons like pistols to rifles and shotguns, devastator and launchers to plasma and cannons. You can even use different weapons at the same time, and the mechanics are great, since you can fire them independently however you want. This is especially useful with pistols early on, since you can choose how you fire and then they are even more powerful than assault rifle when used correctly. The second tree can be useful, but if we're completely honest, it's all shits and giggles, really. You can grab traffic signs to smack enemies with. I mean, who doesn't want that? You can perform melee finishers on stronger enemies, but it's hardly useful. Most of them are the same and there are very few unique ones. The only fun one is with Pyro. The ultimate ability is riding creatures, but good luck trying to grab Werbull or Oknam in the middle of the action. Most enjoyable for me was riding Biomech, and it's actually useful. Speaking of rides, there are many different vehicles. Motorbike is classic, just like Buggy. Mech is a good refreshment, especially if it's Popmobile. But if you're more of a field worker, here you have the good old tractor. And the combined harvester to channel your inner redneck. Now, that, that's a masterpiece. When it comes to the arsenal, there are only two new weapons. Oh. 
Auto shotgun is pretty damn good, but no bigger surprise there. However, there is a surprise in the form of a chainsaw launcher. Yes, it does exactly what it sounds like. It trips through not one, but multiple enemies and can single-handedly end the battle. Because of that, it is somewhat hidden. It is reward for a side quest and is especially worth it on higher difficulties. Separate ammo pool for each of the weapons is great and proved to be fundamental for the quality of pacing and flexibility when it comes to shooting. The new spice in the mix are the weapon mods. Shotgun can launch grenades, rocket launcher has lock-on and fires up to 5 rockets at the same time. And the grenade launcher can detonate cluster grenades at will. Finally, if you think laser gun wasn't Star Wars reference big enough, here we have the big laser beam of death. Gadgets are this game's version of items and power-ups. Life is health injection, heart is extra life, and rage is serious speed and serious damage all in one. Human of Earth! You are filthy and unauthorized! You must surrender now, Barbaric Ape! Really? Cause I was thinking I could reprogram you and then also grab one of those combat drones and use it against mental. Well... The following are more unique. Time Warp slows time, Holo Decoy creates moving and talking holographic Sam. Why do you keep missing? Is it because you suck? Maybe I'm a ghost. And Psycho Grenade turns enemies on each other. There's Mini Nuke if you want to go full bunkers. But my favorite is actually the Black Hole. It sucks up all the aliens come from existence. It is probably the main reason why the serious bump isn't in this one. What is are the secrets? Keeping with tradition, there are tons of secrets in the game. The majority of them are the gadgets and items. There are still infamous parkour secrets, but much less than in Sam 3. Then there are legit events, like going on a stadium and playing football match with Sam clones that speak Croatian, or collecting over 200 health in a haunted corridor that spawns enemies for each, only to fight giant racketeer bus on your way out. I made a complete guide how to find each and every one of them. The soundtrack is pretty much hit or miss. It is inspired by Hollywood blockbusters and there are some really great melodies. However, I really miss rhythmic tones here, especially during walking parts. Those were like trademark of serious Sam. Some of this peaceful music made me want to pull my hair out. One awkward thing is that often the music just stops abruptly. No transition whatsoever. Sounds are mostly great. There are some that I liked better in previous games, so it feels weird sometimes. But overall, it's a nice contribution to a bombastic combat. Where the graphics are concerned, the matter is also divided. Bugs and glitches were everywhere, textures were highly inconsistent, frame rate also, and the models looked terrible. I think we got them, boss. Great where credit is due. Crow Team did a lot in the first few patches and most of bugs and glitches were eradicated. 
However, the models are still looking bad, texture glitches continued when changing the settings, there's constant popping during cinematics, and the framerate issues were still a train wreck. The models are still bad and framerate optimization could still be much better, but the progress is significant. Textures load fast enough, vistas are gorgeous like in any Sam game, and it definitely has its moments. Planet Earth, baby! There's no place like it. That being said, while it looks good, it's not all that special for today's standards, and still should have been a lot better optimized for what it's offering. The strongest aspect of the game, thankfully, is the gameplay. It's responsive, creative, punchy and meaty. The environments are partially destructible and there's lots of juicy explosions. Combined with the new vehicles, gadgets and abilities, it definitely feels fresh. But is it the best? No. After lots of thinking and playing I came to conclusion that despite possibly the best lineup of enemies and dual wielding which was long time coming, it still wasn't able to be the mastery of the first two games. There's simply something magical about them and most of the innovations simply feels excessive. Vehicles are fun but mainly for the first few rides and the gadgets are too clumsy to use. You don't have time for useless animations and shuffling through inventory while you're being rushed by the hordes of enemies. Normal difficulty might get you off guard, it's punishing and overwhelming, especially when you're not used to gadgets and the new mechanics. Then the difference to hard and serious is strangely unnoticeable. The best job I'd say is done on easier difficulties. There is the same amount of tension and enemies which is hard to pull off. However, the only way to die on tourists is to enter a mech. And this is just right for the enjoyment without having to sweat too much. Co-op is the only multiplayer aspect in this one. That was to be expected. Although many fans still want a proper deathmatch that was popularized ever since the second encounter. What this game could use is definitely some sort of arcade mode or additional features and achievements. Having just a campaign will only get you so far. The Legion system is another elephant in the room. I said it before and I can say it again. Serious Sam don't need it. Sure, it's a nice trick that really can make the experience seem more powerful, but let's be real. It was downplayed in this game and I think it could have been better off if Crow Team didn't hype it up in the marketing campaign. It should have been used in France, but it wasn't. Furthermore, there is a whole level taking place in Russia that was cut out of the game. Why am I mentioning it? Because it's cherry on the top of a situation that leads us to conclusion. Serious M4 could have and should have been a lot better and a lot more, but it was rushed. In Serious M4 for every yes there's a but. Most of it due to a lack of polish and in the development, but there was also a good portion of experimenting. Ladies and gentlemen, the express bus to anywhere but here is now departing. Some reviews said it played too safe and I completely disagree. We do not need another Doom Eternal. Sam does not need to completely rework its game mechanics and structures. Greater enemy variety, those few new weapons, changes to the existing ones and heavy dual wielding are the things that clearly work. On the other hand, melee finishers still mostly suck, gadgets are impractical to use when you need them the most, frame rate drops are unacceptable in a chaos filled Sam game, and for god's sake stop putting new mechanics in the very last boss fight of the game. With three new Sam games after the classics, it is ironic that no new game design feels just as good still to this day. It's hard to point out, but there's obviously something special in that simplicity. Unlike Sam, I don't mind the modern setting, actually. It may be restricting by horizontal level design, but it is what it is. However, there's definitely a certain charm and playful atmosphere in those unusual historic places that the modern ones are missing. There's no denying that. Whatever the Crow team does next, I hope that they play to Sam's strengths. They are not a AAA studio, and so I wish they don't try so much to make a spectacle that ends up being just spread too thin. 
I know they can do it smarter and better. All it needs is a different approach. As for you, Serious M4 is a good game to get on sale. And now a message from Lord Oh, shut up! Especially in these times when every other war game is just doom and desperation everywhere. The game is on PC and Google Stadia only. There were mixed responses whether will it release on consoles later or not at all. However, it does support controllers, and 360 and Xbox One controller do work natively. As always, the choice is yours. If you are up to it, get silly, have fun and stay serious. I got a bone to pick with you. Let's go! For more salmon games, keep it up to the core!